Hey guys, this is Matt Workman, and today I'm going to show you my new update for the Virtual Cinematography Tools plugin that I've been rating. Uh, so let's start by launching the script. Um, you'll see that there are three tabs. Um, before there were two, there's the Cameras tab, the Scene tab, and the Camera Sequencer. Uh, this tab I haven't done anything with, really. I just kind of banished this Camera Sequencer frame into its own tab to be worked on later. Um, for Scene, it's the same feet to inches HUD script that I've written before, except I made the buttons bigger which is a big quality of life change for me anyway. So uh, to start with this scene, let's create a HUD and you'll see it starts, shows up down here on the bottom left and we're currently in centimeters. And I'm gonna change it to inches and then to feet. So again, each one of these squares is uh, a square foot. Um, before we get into the cameras tab, let's bring in something to look at. Let's go to our actors tab here. And this isn't part of my script. This is um, Layout Tools, which is a, a free plugin that Autodesk gives us, which is uh, really nice for managing assets and that sort of thing. I'm going to turn off joints and I'm going to turn off IK handles. And this little menu, you'll see that um, it's kind of a pain. It's not alphabetical. It's kind of a pain to find stuff in there. And I've, uh, I've built something to help um, deal with that. So here we are back at VCT and let's go through the different frames one by one. So the first frame is the original and things that have changed there. I've added the Dragon 6K, and I think that's about it, but I added the Red Dragon. Uh, I've been shooting with that a lot lately, so I've needed to know the film back for pre those jobs. Uh, this is all standard. Uh, Origin actually doesn't work, so just use current, current viewport. Uh, no aim, and we go to real world scale, and we kind of, let's rough in a frame like this, and we'll create. Cool, so that works. And here we are, let's reframe back up here on her. And so next is the camera manager, and this is the same as before. Again, the buttons are just bigger to make life easier. Um, cycle through cameras would basically switch between all the custom cameras you have and look through perspective. It does exactly that. Um, one thing that I found on the internet, I actually did not write this, but I was, um, Really glad to find it. Uh, if we go to the script, I've written who, the author of this wonderful script, and its name is Dave Gerard. And what this does is it creates a frustrum, which is um, kind of like a physical uh, representation of the field of view of the camera. Um, they have those in programs like Nuke and SketchUp and a lot of programs. Maybe Maya even has one, but not that I know of. So. What you do is you select the camera and you select a depth and let's call it 20 for this and that'll be 20 feet and you click make frustrum and you'll see that it's very clear now um, what the camera is seeing. And if you were to compare that to the actual frame, you'll see that it's uh, very, very accurate. And this is really helpful if you're doing a uh, a tech viz or a pre -viz where you need to illustrate where the camera is looking and sometimes this graphic is not so clear or you're like so extremely far away that it's uh, it's too small to see which way it's oriented. So the frustrum is really good for that. Um, the next thing that I personally wrote, uh, very proud of, even though it's kind of simple, does save quite a bit of time, and it is create cam height. Yeah, so basically you click that once you have the camera selected and it creates this little um, this measurement here and the measurement will move around with the camera and it will update if you move the height up and down. Uh, and that's really helpful. Uh, you can do it manually by creating a, dis a distance measurement tool. But you know, with the crowded scene with like, you know, several cameras, it's actually, it actually can take quite a bit of time. So it's nice to be able to just select a camera, hit create. And the last thing I've done here is to, to, to really minimize going into this because I've, I've lost a lot of time in here sometimes just, just looking for what I'm trying to turn off. Um, so what I've done is I've, I've exposed a couple of those right here in the UI. So this hides the dimension and this hides locators. Um, I don't have a thing to hide the frustrum yet. Um, I'll have to add that next time. And then it's just as easy to put them back. So we'd most likely would hide locators and leave dimensions when we're kind of illustrating, you know, from above. That's what the field of view from the camera. And then from a view like this, that's the height. Um, so that's it for this update. Um, things that I'm looking to add next time are actual physical representations of the cameras over this Maya, um, this Maya camera, so that there's actual geometry there. So if you do select an Alexa and you create, there'll be an option to have the actual physical geometry to scale 
of the camera, of an Alexa. And then same thing, if I chose a dragon, there would be a box and a lens, and it would basically take up the same physical space as, of that camera, which has become more and more and more important as you shoot in small spaces and you, you're on jibs, and you actually need to take into account the actual physical attributes of the camera, not just the film back. So that's it for this update. Hope you guys like it, and talk to you later. Bye.